Okay, in this video, we'll finish up by uh, actually um, deploying AVE onto our ESX hosts, um, you know, uh, finishing up our configuration in APIC, connecting some VMs, and, and actually pinging. Uh, so for, for sake of time, you know, uh, in the last video, we, we built the DVS. Uh, we called it VC underscore AVE. I've already gone ahead and connected these two hosts. You know, there's no mystery there. It's standard VMware operations. I just basically connected them to a uh, a, a couple of free um, you know uh, NICs in each of those ESX servers. So they're all deployed and connected. These two ESX hosts are of course connected uh, to my ACI fabric. Um, so the next step that we actually need to do is now push the AVE onto the DVS that now lives on both of these two hosts. So let's go back home. We're going to go back into the uh, Cisco ACI fabric plugin. And I just want to uh, point out that this you know plugin has already been installed. I've already connected it, you know, with my login credentials to APIC. So all of that stuff has been done ahead of time. You should have that done as well. Uh, but I'm going to click on this ACI Virtual Edge feature. This is something new in the 3.1 release. So make sure that you're running the, the latest version of the, the plugin for vCenter. Um, so when we click on uh, ACI Virtual Edge, uh, we're going to see that we have our two hosts here. Uh, we can see that nothing's been installed, you know, from the point of view of, of AVE. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll start with uh, 104 and then I won't show doing 108 because it's going to be exactly the same. So I'll go ahead and uh, click the, the, the box there. Uh, this is the only version we have of the Virtual Edge device. Um, I need to select a port group. Uh, this is for the management interface. If you remember, we said that it had a standard management interface uh, for us to SSH and uh, do troubleshooting commands and check logs. So I've already got something like that set up uh, right here. Um, this is my standard out-of-band uh, uh, port group that lives on a, a local vSwitch, nothing to do with ACI or anything. It's just, you know, what I do my management over. Uh, you'll probably have something similar. In terms of the data store, uh, we want to use the local data store only, and I do have one here on this host, and it is selected, so we're good there. Uh, and finally, we need to uh, come up with a, a password for the AVE VM itself. Uh, there are some requirements uh, for the strength of this password, so pick an appropriate password of your liking and you're ready to go. Uh, the next thing we'll do is click Install Upgrade ACI Virtual Edge um, and click click Yes. Now, from this point, you know the, the, the plugin will do everything for you. It will copy the VM. It will actually you know um, uh, put the, the VM's interfaces into the right port groups of the DVS we built. It'll power it on. Um, you know, pretty much the whole process is, is, is pretty much you sit back and, and, and watch it happen. Um, so while this one is deploying, I'm going to go ahead and Pause the video. I'll also bring in ESX host 108, which you won't see. Uh, and then I'll start the video again, you know, probably about three, four minutes later when, when everything is, is done deploying. Okay, uh, when it's all done, this is exactly what you should see. Uh, 104, 104 deployed in like a minute. 108, I made the mistake of copying it from a data store that it that it had to, uh, it, that wasn't directly attached. So it took uh, probably about three or four minutes. Uh, but here we go. This is what we want to see. We want to see online. Uh, that's good. The version of a of, uh, uh, of the AVE. Uh, this is the actual name of the virtual machine that got pushed, and we'll see that uh, further in just a second. And then it picked up some management IPs in my environment. So this is the IP addresses that I could SSH to and, and troubleshoot if, if something was wrong. So let's actually go back to my host and clusters. Uh, and we'll see on here that um, two, uh, two virtual machines now show up. I've got 104 and 108 in their own little grouping. So um, this is the, the AVE for 104. This is the AVE uh, for 108. Uh, they're already powered on. They're already attached uh, into the, uh, the proper port groups. Uh, if you see here in terms of networks, remember I mentioned there were three interfaces inside, outside, and then of course the management interface. Uh, this jives of course with how my lab is set up. Let's go ahead and look at the networking aspect here really quick. Uh, so here's the AVE that we built, you know, when we pushed it from APIC. Um, and if we look at the distributed port groups here, we can see here that, um, you know, all of these things were built and configured for us. So if you look uh, at the inside, notice the VLAN range 500 to 540, does that ring a bell? That was the sub VLAN pool that I built in ACI uh, uh, in use right already by, by this particular port. Notice the outside interface is using 3456. That's my ACI infra VLAN and over that VLAN then I can 
run my VXLAN tunnel. Uh, so my particular AVE is acting like a, a, a VXLAN tunnel endpoint as part of my ACI fabric, and that's, that's exactly uh, what I want. So the next step that we need to do now is to, now that we've got the AVE deployed, go back into ACI, uh, you know, build some EPGs, attach this VMM domain, and test. Okay, so I already had an existing tenant and I already had set up bridge domains and VRFs. All that standard stuff is already done. Um, so I created a, an endpoint group called AVE EPG here. And right now there's, there's basically nothing going on there. There's nothing there. So what I need to do is I need to attach uh, the VMM domain that we built uh, in the last video. So there it is right there, VC underscore AVE. Um, we can go ahead uh, and leave everything as it is. I think everything looks good. Um, so now that we've got this VMM domain attached to the EPG, we can actually now put VMs into uh, this particular EPG and test. So here's my uh, virtual machine that lives in my pod number one, if you remember my drawing. It's called Win8Gold, and I'm going to just modify the network adapter, and I'm going to go ahead and put it into the EPG that I just built, and I'll do the same thing with the other VM that lives in pod two. So this is the VM in pod two called win8-pod2, and I'm just putting it into the same EPG. Uh, no, nothing, no mystery there. Okay, so this is the console of win8gold in pod one, and you can see it pulled an, a DHCP address from a server in my lab of 1.30. Uh, we can actually see if we can ping the default gateway, uh, and in fact we can. If we go here and we do the same for win8pod2, uh, this happened to have been a hard-coded address. Um, I think my slide might have said it was 42, it's actually 22, uh, but no difference, it's in the same EPG, uh, and I can of course, uh, you know, ping my default gateway. Uh, so let's go back here and see if we can ping 1.22, uh, and in fact we can. So what's happening is traffic is flowing uh, from this uh, VM through the AVE in ESX 104, uh, into my ACI fabric in pod one, across the IPN device, which uh, is supporting my multipod, uh, over to the uh, fabric devices for ACI in pod two, and then down to ESX 108, uh, and everybody is, uh, is talking. Um, I also happen to have a layer three out um, outside uh, for this particular VRF. So it just kind of shows you that, you know, even if I'm not, I mean, I have contracts and everything already set up. So uh, these guys can all talk whether they're in the same EPG, uh, whether they're over a layer three out. Uh, and in just a second, I'll set up a, a virtual machine in an entirely unrelated virtual switch. And we'll see with proper contracts that they can in fact talk. Okay, what I've done is I've, uh, in another EPG called Silver, I attached uh, uh, another device here. If I go ahead and look at its members, um, I attached Win8 Silver at 1.42. He happens to be on um, my AVS uh, switch. I didn't have an extra physical NICs in my ESX server, so, uh, but this would work equally well with VMware's own DVS, no problem. So he's at uh, 1.42. Here is my uh, AVE devices, and if I look at the operational members, you can see there's 1.30, 1.8 Gold, and 1.8 Pod 2, and the other pod. Those addresses, you can see that it's being reported from the AVE uh, device, and of course, I chose for VXLAN-backed uh, thing. So let's try to ping this guy over here in silver, and we'll end the video with that. Uh, so let's see, he, he was 42. Uh, I have proper contracts already built, so, you know, all that stuff I don't have to worry about. And, and there you go. It just kind of shows you that everything is working as expected. So uh, best of luck when you deploy AVE in your own environment. Um, and thank you.